Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Summer Myers. Today we're going to be talking about how to homeschool with your baby. <laughs> if you're here, I'm assuming it's because you need some extra help and tips or you're planning in advance. And, and if that's true, way to go you. And if your baby is already here and you're tearing your hair out, totally okay. I've been there and we're going to talk you through it and it's going to be okay. You hang in there. You've got this. You are a mom and you are a powerhouse. So I have a couple of thoughts about homeschooling with a baby. Um, and a lot of them aren't going to make sense. So we're going to just try to go through it and get through it. All right, let's start with mom newborn tips. Uh, take a break from hardcore curriculum. So I'm talking about language arts. I'm talking about math. Um, if you're doing science and history before baby, excellent. Those are fabulous. Maybe those take more of a forefront and those hard curriculars where you have to sit down and physically be with your children, take a back seat. So I'm talking about like science documentaries. I'm talking about travel documentaries. Um, movies are totally fine right now. You're absolutely okay and your children will absorb it and they'll survive. Read alouds. Another thing we also did was a lot of read alouds. I made sure I had a bunch of books from the library that I could just read out loud to them. So even if we weren't able to do school that day, school that day, we did, um, I would go to the library and I would get nonfiction books, six books that I was interested in and then I knew my kids would be interested in and I would just read them from the table. So go ahead, go to the library, pick up a couple of read alouds. You can do chapter books, the Magic, um, Magic Treehouse books. Those have a couple of nonfiction compilations um, that we've read and those are fabulous. Uh, also picture books. Picture books are, there's so many really good ones and beautiful ones that are nonfiction that hold your children's interest and they can see the pictures. And I'm obviously talking about young elementary school kids, um, middle school kids as well. They, who doesn't love a good picture book? The second, so then the next tip for having a newborn is it's absolutely okay to not homeschool on your beautiful homeschool arranged space. So most homeschool families, they homeschool on the kitchen table, they homeschool uh, in their own little separate room. And it is absolutely okay to instead do a special trip to mom and dad's room and homeschool on the bed. That's like one of my kids' favorite things to do is to all snuggle in with the blankets and pillows and me in my nursing clothes just hanging out. And we're all snuggled together and we're reading books together and we're, and we're going through their work. And that's a special treat for them and absolutely is okay. The other tip with newborns is absolutely sling them. Wrap that baby up in those sling wraps. Those are super comfortable, those Moby wraps where you have the baby pressed up against you. You get your hands free, you can run around, you can pick things up and grab things and your baby's just snuggled in and just enjoy that. Um, but also pay attention to your back, pay attention to how your body feels because you are still recovering. Uh, the wrap is great. And I've heard that if you if your back is starting to hurt you, you're doing it wrong. But I have an especially long torso and those wraps worked for quite a while, but I could not wear it all day. Eventually it just pulled my shoulders forward. So pay attention to how your body is feeling. Don't overdo it, give yourself space. All right, my final tip is, is if you have a partner that has contributed to the situation of a newborn, which I would assume, um, let dad take over on the weekends. Dad can absolutely take all those kid out, kids out to go camping, take them to go hiking, take them to go to museums. Dad time, absolutely dad time. Get them all out of the house with dad. Dad absolutely should be involved in this. And from my experience, dads who are a part of the homeschool are more likely to be for homeschool. So if you have a partner who is not as enthusiastic about what's happening in your home, let him give a chance to try it out himself. What man doesn't like being listened to all the time? Um, he should absolutely take the rest of your kids and leave you alone with the baby just to relax, give yourself a break. And that those dad and children time, they will remember that forever. And they'll also remember that their dad cared about their education. Even if dad isn't talking about adverbs or nouns or anything, he should be able to take them somewhere interesting to talk about. Whether that is, you know, what he does during the week is your dad, is dad a, um, a plumber? Is he, oh, does he work in software? Does he go to a bank? I mean, 
whatever he does, he has knowledge that he can impart on his children, whether it is at a super basic, superficial level or whether it's something a lot higher. Is dad working on the car on the weekends? Bring those kids out and let them see it. Lots of great things that dad can do and participate in. Not only that, is dad is taking them out of the house, then that gives you time to just enjoy your baby and have that space together. Give yourself space to recover. It is absolutely okay to just not homeschool for a month or two, even three months. When I had my baby, it was in December, it was cold and just cold and rainy because we live in North Carolina. And I gave myself a month and a half. My mother-in-law came and flew out and I just said, you know what, we are not going to school as diligently as we normally do. Um, but then I realized my newborn sleeps a lot. So we ended up doing a lot of schooling. My mother-in-law was there to help me. Um, my husband was going, he was actually also had a lot of leave off so he could hold the baby as well. But if you don't have that extra help, that is okay to just give yourself space. Newborns only last for like two or three weeks and then that month goes by and they've lost their little swollen cheeks and, and swollen eyes. <laughs> I shouldn't say swollen, chubby cheeks and chubby eyes. And they just look so different and they've grown and they don't sleep quite as snugly. They don't just pass out on you. So enjoy that newborn stage. It only lasts for so long and then it's over. So, you know, give yourself space, give your, you and your baby time to recover. Give yourself space. You deserve space. All right. New baby has grown up. They're no longer that squishy little body anymore. They are a lot more wiggly. They're a little more, they're able to see. I'm talking about two, three, four, five, six months old. They're not quite walking yet. They're still, they're maybe they're sitting up. They're not crawling. They're just kind of there, but they want you to be held. They know that that's the place where they want to be. So what do you do when you have a baby that is in that range? For that, it actually is more focused on your kids. Kids should have a couple of activities that they can do when mom is interrupted. Handwriting, spelling, flashcards, writing their name, learning their address, have them read aloud to a sibling, have children that can't read yet, have your older sibling read to them, um, practicing an instrument. Those small short activities that take between, so you want them to be like five, 10, 15 minute increments where you can say, all right, baby needs to nurse. I need a second to organize myself on the couch. Here's your workbook. Get a, knock a couple of these pages out. Or here are your flashcards. I need to go put the baby upstairs to take a nap. I want you to be able to practice these while I'm gone. Oh, baby is crying. I'm gonna need to bounce him for a minute. We are not gonna be able to, thank you, cat. Thank you, kitty. Okay, I'll start over. I don't know if I'm still centered or not. Baby is crying. Um, I'm going to need a second to bounce baby until, <sighs> until he calms down here, work, go and practice your instrument for a few minutes, just little short interruption things that they can work on until you can get yourself situated and everybody calm. Another thing I love is the baby mat. We have a baby mat that has the rainbow and it's got the little toys that dangle. It makes noise when the baby kicks. Um, it makes beautiful piano sounds. And by beautiful, I mean absolutely irritating. However, it kept my baby so well occupied to other mats that I had previously purchased. I'm gonna link it down in the description box below. Take a look at it if you're truly looking for good baby entertainment. My next tip for three to six months is going outside. There's something about being outdoors that just like calms the baby down. It just like brings it in. Let's bring it in a little bit. Get some control over yourself. You're only three months old. Bring it together here. You go outside, um, spread out a picnic blanket, something uh, warm. Caveat here, unless it's snowing outside, maybe not the best idea. Um, if it's a nice day outside, lay that blanket out, stretch out, get all your books out. Your kids will love it and they'll remember it too. What's more, one of those great homeschool memories, um, snacks, and just have your baby outside and enjoying the sun. Get some of that natural vitamin D in. Um, nothing calms down any of my kids more than just being outside. I don't know if it's the change in pressure or like feeling the wind on their face. There's something about being outdoors. So try that if you're tearing your hair out. 
<sighs> one of the other things is don't overcommit yourself. I am one of those moms, if somebody asks me, hey, do you wanna go do this? Or hey, can you help me out with this? Or whatever. I feel in pro and I feel like I need to do it. I'm one of those people. I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. I would love to do your charity fundraiser thing. Or, oh, absolutely. I would love to go to your party. Or absolutely. I would love to go pick up your mother from the airport. I'm just one of those people. If you ask me, I'm going to try to do it. Fortunately, since the birth of my fifth kid, people have stopped asking. <laughs> I wonder if they're just like seeing how the, that crazy tick in my eye <laughs> and they're like, hmm, maybe we shouldn't, maybe we'll pass her name over. Um, but don't don't fall into that temptation of committing yourself. And that goes beyond just people asking you to do stuff, asking yourself to do stuff. Like we used to do swim lessons. We used to do gymnastics, dance, all those extracurriculars that I thought my kids absolutely need. And when my baby was born, I thought, you know what? We don't need to be going and doing those things. I, rushing around, I mean, that's part of the beauty of homeschool was I didn't have to follow anybody's schedule. And I was burdening myself with the schedule. Don't overcommit yourself. And and let that freedom, just, just drop it. Let it yourself be free. Um, and that's very liberating. Uh, another thing that people talk about that I saw frequently when I was doing research for how am I going to do this baby was a lot of people were saying, be flexible. Now, I'm one of those people that I, I know I have a a schedule for nap time. I have a schedule for nursing. I have a schedule for regular eating. I just like to schedule and plan my time. I know when my baby is going to go down for the night and know when they are going to wake up. That's the way it works. This baby proved all of that wrong. He was just like, you like to plan and schedule? Welcome to my world. So he did not follow schedule. He's never followed a nap time and he's going on 15 months now and I'm still like scratching my head going, you do sleep, right? He just recently started sleeping through the night. Thank you, Lord. So when I say be flexible, I mean, don't put yourself under so much pressure to, okay, baby needs to go down now. Why isn't he going down now? Why is he screaming upstairs in his bed because he's alone and you've only been in alive for six months. Shouldn't you stop screaming now? Don't you have it together? Get it together, kid. Pay attention to your baby in the back of your mind. Put a little corner on the space of your brain and say, okay, he's starting to yawn. He's starting to rub his eyes. Even though it's a half hour before bedtime, let's go ahead and take you to bed. Um, sometimes you miss those cues. It's just going to happen and baby's going to be screaming and crying and it's going to be, he's overstimulated, overexhausted. He's not going down for a nap. It's okay. It's okay to just say, you know what guys, that's all the school we have today. Um, and wrap it up and just focus on your baby. He's only going to be there and he's only going to be this age for a couple of months and then it's over and it's done with and your kids will catch up. And not only that, They'll be like, yeah, this is the best year ever. So we've covered newborn. We've covered the three to six months age where they're just kind of little worms. Now let's talk about when they are crawling. Whole different ball game. Totally different other things that they're supposed to be doing. Um, and it's a struggle. The struggle is real. So uh, my biggest point that I can do to help you out is to say food. Strap that kiddo into a high chair and array him with snacks. I'm talking about the delicacies of graham crackers, Cheerios, rice squares, those little yogurt bits that are really good that you can get in packages at Aldi. Those are all fabulous things. Provide a variety of food. If you would really like to take the time of chopping food, go for it. Fresh fruit, um, probably not fresh vegetables. Um, stuff that you can give your child a chance to just sit there and eat and mash. Bonus points if you put like a tarp or a sheet underneath the high chair. So when it's time to clean up, all you have to do is grab that sheet, grab that tablecloth, pop it in the wash, and you're done. Everything is good. The other thing I have is I have three to four baskets strategically placed where he knows that's where that toy is. Um, and I don't want you to fill up the basket completely. Make him dig in there and grab it. Um, you know, like five or six toys max. You don't want it filled to the brim. You don't want them to be super overwhelmed with all the options and just be like, too much, I'm not gonna worry about it. He should be able to see everything that is in the basket and it shouldn't be piled on top of each other. 
And also be smart about what toys you put in. I have a big bin of baby toys and they range from little newborn wrap around like things that they can suck on their wrist toys to little shaky wands to um, toys with buttons that make noise and whatever. Your newborn not gonna be interested in the button toys. And alternatively, your nine, eight, 10 month old is not gonna be interested that in the stuff that he was playing with when he was three months old. It's different, his mind has developed further enough. He's probably gonna be more interested in things that you guys play with yourselves. So feel free to stick a spatula in there or a metal pot lid that you don't use or, or things like that that he can play with and, and investigate. Um, my kid loves cups. At that age, it was all about cups and stacking the cups into each other and then pulling them off and saying, wow, those things actually fit. I gave him a couple of little toys and by little, I mean like the Fisher Price people or whatever, and he could stick those inside his cups and then pull them out. I mean, that was literally hours of fun for him and it didn't get old, especially if I had different kinds of cups for each basket. So I typically put like three plastic cups in each basket and he'd find those and he'd take them out and restack them again. Blocks, uh, little match car, uh, little matchstick cars. Um, those are things that he really loved and gravitated to. So have those baskets strategically placed, a basket for each room. If you are confident in the safety of another room completely where he's outside of your uh, viewpoint. My homeschool lab, my homeschool room that we do is actually in our family room. It's it's open. It's right connected to the kitchen, um, and we have a formal sitting room, which kind of acts like a place where we can keep clean for when guests come um, and sit and chat. And it's all it has is books. It's actually this room here. All it has is books. It's got this comfy couch, um, and it's close by to everything that I can still hear him. All the outlets are covered. And I've put a bunch of our Fisher Price toys in here. And he knows that he can just crawl over here and he's not gonna be interrupted and he can just play. And I can hear typically him messing around and throwing stuff around in here and it's totally fine. And actually when he is out of my sight, he plays a lot longer and is a lot better. So if you have a room close by that they can crawl off to and be safely play by themselves, let your baby explore and do that and, and get used to the idea of not being in the same space that you are in. Now that your baby is also crawling around and moving around and acting more independent, it's okay now to allow your kids to um, monitor. My neighbor does this, I do this. Um, when you have that many kids, typically this many kids, you typically have an older child that is responsible enough to know, to kind of keep an eye on them, make sure there's no small toys around or small things that baby could stick in their mouth. So we assign baby time. Typically this is in the same room that I am in. Sometimes it's in a room on the same floor. Um, but they had a chance to just play with the baby by themselves. And if I, if I phrased it just right, my kids would fight over it and say, I want first turn. And I would, and I would, you, you have to phrase it in such a way that your kids are eager and excited and you also can't overuse it. So if you're just like all the time pushing baby onto your kids and so you can do other things, they're going to get tired of doing it and they're not going to, it's not going to be a fun thing because mom doesn't want to do it. So why am I doing it? Absolutely. Let your older kids have a chance to take care of the baby and watch them and play with them. Who wants to play with a fun baby? That's awesome. Um, another thing when they're crawling and walking, um, short bursts of lessons. So say, okay, we've got 20 minutes here. We're just going to palow through this. And if after the timer rings, that's it. We're going to stop and we're going to pick it up the following day. This doesn't work for every lesson. It doesn't work for every day, but if you can just get through short bursts instead of just one long session to get it all taken care of in that one time frame, um, you're, you're just never going to be able to accomplish anything because you're constantly interrupted. So try going for quick short bursts, just power through it and just get what you need done. So it's not going to work perfectly every single time. You've got your baskets, you've had older children watch them. It's not going to work every time. You've had your older kids watch them. You've got your baskets, you've got your toys in other rooms, you've prepped the stairs. 
there are going to be times where baby just wants to sit on your lap. And I've had those babies where that's all they wanna do every time I set them down. Like, don't set me down, I'll die down here. What do you do? What do you do when your baby is just insistent on sitting on your lap? And the next thing I can tell you is little toys that they can play with on your lap. So I, cups were a big favorite. I mentioned that before. Um, I typically take some homeschool supplies that we use on a regular basis. I've got a peanut butter jar with a bunch of whiteboard markers and he loves taking those out and putting those back in and putting the top on and he'll usually be so distracted doing that sort of thing that i can set him down right next to me and he continues to play with that doesn't work every time sometimes it does we also have a lot of math manipulatives that he likes to move around and play with um, more often than not he wants to climb onto the table um, and i don't have any advice for that if you've got something mention it please because i'm still struggling with my baby trying to crawl on the table and sitting on our workbooks. I think that's everything. I think I talked about it all. I don't know what time it is. What time is it? Mm. Gosh, it's lunchtime. Man, I'm hungry. I'm going to go get something to eat. See you later. But if he can take him out of the house and... What was that? You know, if you're walking back and forth, people are going to see you in your jammies. Oh, let me see! That's so cute! Marry the mouse. Marry the mole. What's I saying? Oh, be flexible. So I think, excuse me. Oh, mercy. Um, my battery's running out. Okay. Get it. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, my nose is itching. Sorry, that was my phone. Dad, come here, put your shoes on. Yeah? We live in a busy house. If you can't handle it, then what the heck are you here for?